at this point in time. Come on, church. Why you're starting? Let's put that together. As we welcome our late pastor, Pastor Jerry Aze. Come on, put your hands together. <laughs> I guess I'm the most excited to be here. You know, I, 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 I think all we should just do today is just to keep singing and just keep getting. I don't know, but I'm so excited. Um, God is good all the time. He poured his song of praise. In this heart of mine, God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good. for some people but I know there are people in this house this is your testimony God is good all the time he put his son God God is good Chai. all the time and through His light will shine, God is good, God is good, all the time. Put those hands together for the great God that we serve.
we thank you, oh God. Words are not enough. Sentences are not enough. We don't even know how to say thank you. Thank you for everything, Lord. These are grateful hearts. Thank you for bringing us to this family. Thank you for making our paths meet with one another. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for seeing us through, oh God. Thank you. Thank you for being the only voice that mattered in our lives. Lord, if other voices were to lead the way, we wouldn't be where we are today. But just because you decided to lead the way, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Great and mighty God. For every time we were confused, you brought direction. For the moments we felt like giving up, Lord, you came through. For the times we wondered, where else do we go to? You miraculously showed up. Nobody like you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, oh God. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, oh God. Men may not understand how far you've brought us. They may not understand. Men may not understand how far you brought us. They may not understand. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you all the glory. Thank you, oh God. Lord, I'm just simply overwhelmed. I don't know where to begin and where to end. Thank you, oh God. Be magnified, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Help me celebrate the great God that we serve. God is good. God is good. You know, there are just so many songs coming to my heart. And then you think about the faithfulness. Let me tell you. You see, people could explain away one year. They would explain away when you're well, well, well. You know the way these things happen. Do you know, you know, maybe they just survive by chance. But by the time you're going to, you have survived a second year. And they're looking at you, wow. So this is really true. There's a song I love to sing. Is that my key? If you had allowed the enemy to strike me down, Onye kam ga koro, Onye kam ga koro. If you had allowed my enemies to strike me down, Onye kam ga koro Onye kam ga koro Aga me buli gelo Oh Lord Aga me buli gelo Father we thank you Don't mind me this is how this is how you know how it is Sometimes you look at the success of David in the scriptures and you wonder why did God love him this was a guy who was exuberant with praises every time up to the point that his wife watched him from a distance one day and said he doesn't even have an idea that he's a king why is he dancing like a madman and David looked at his wife and said you don't understand that's the reason why God collected the kingdom from your father is this dance that I'm dancing that's why he collected the kingdom from your father and gave it to me so we are coming from a mighty long way he collected some things for some people and when oh thank you jesus you know you know if not that if not that it will look somehow that you mean he came all the way from nigeria to church this morning and he didn't preach anything honestly i just wanted this amazing worshipers 
Let's just go on. Let's just soak. Let's just soak ourselves in the place of worship and just keep releasing and letting him know, Lord, you have look at your life. Look at your life. Some of us who were not born in America, nothing would have made you believe that one day your feet will step into this land. Not to even think of living in this land. Not to think of how wait a minute, how have you been surviving? How did God bring you through all the things you've been through? And you're still here smiling. No, the troubles are not yet all over. But how you still manage to smile through it all is still a miracle. Thank you, God. Oh, Kashada. Let's read the Bible so that it will be that I read the Bible. But the truth of the matter is that I feel such a huge excitement in my spirit. Thank you, the, oh my God. And you know, you know, I kept thinking to myself, how do you have an amazing set of worshipers all gathered together in one church? How do you have... And, and this, is, this is our broad church. Do you understand? It's our broad. He's not in Umoya. He's not... He's, Oh my guys are going to come hard on me after now. So, but this is abroad. I mean, and all of them, everyone, and I'm just looking and saying, Kai, every is such a blessing. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, oh God. Everything is a blessing. The way I feel in my spirit, just, just in case. So in between, whenever I just remember, I, just forgive me for, for, for being a little bit uncoordinated today. Because... My heart is really full of joy. And I was just sitting back when I came and I was asking a pastor, I said, are you fine? Are you okay? Are you doing well? Are you all right? He probably thought that I was being very nice. I, I'm not usually that nice, but I was just so overjoyed this morning that all I wanted to be sure that was, it was okay. It was feeling the same way I was feeling this morning. Because the Bible says it is with joy that you will draw. So the first time you know there's no drawing is when the devil attacks your joy. So when you just come to the place where, oh, Lord, I'm feeling the solution. No, no, no. The devil doesn't want you to draw something. So whenever there's joy, that means something is about to come up. Whenever there is joy, something is about to change. Dimensions and levels are about to change. Would you help me heighten your neighbor? Tell your neighbor, I heard that right. I guess that was a wrong neighbor. Leave that one, get in the face of another. And give that one a high ten and tell them, I heard that right. Whoa, for all the wonderful people, for all the wonderful persons, look at Pastor GT now. Eh? Look at Pastor GT. Let me tell you something. If you think it is easy to have this number of people in America in two years, go and start your own. <laughs> Body will phone you. Sorry, um, but... Um, so you know the way I do. So please forgive me if I just go that um, way. And I want to say that, um, you know, I, as, as the pastor, his pastor, I know the behind the scenes tears. And he's not crying for his own problem. He's crying for every one of us. And then he says, Pastor, please, this one, that one, days we fasted, days we prayed, days we, and all he's doing, let me tell you, um, there are times God will bless you, not for anything, because of the heart of your pastor. Because he's, let me tell you, sometimes, which like I said earlier on, don't wait, you sit back and you come to church and you say, but, but pastor's word, that word, I didn't feel it. I didn't feel that word. As if he preached for you to feel it. That's not the reason why, or I, I didn't, I didn't, did, did you feel the atmosphere of the spirit? Do you feel the atmosphere? We don't used to feel it. We don't feel the atmosphere of the spirit. We just receive it. Do you understand what I'm saying? And when you see a man whose heart is right with God and right with you, he doesn't need to say too much to you sometimes. Sometimes he will need to touch your shoulder and tell you he's well. Once he says he's well, like I said, you just receive it, say amen. Once he says he's well, and this is a man, and I'm saying this because, no, I'm not, God forbid that I'll stand on the altar and I'm telling, I'm just saying because I want to eulogize him. God forbid, God forbid, God forbid three times. And I am saying this thing because I am aware that this is the kind of heart that he has. A heart that looks out for the sheep. A heart that looks out. You know what I say to my congregation all the time? I say, I want to be like your David. I want to be a David unto you. David says, when the bear 
when they came against he said i went to the mouth of the lion i collected my sheep from the mouth of the lion. from the mouth of the lion. that means that this sheep is not a meal and i tell my congregation you see all of you all the parishioners here you can never be a meal in the amount or hand or whatever of the devil as long as i remain your pastor times there are times when you can't fight your battles but the covering over your life does that yes if you like remove yourself from a covering there are times when you know there are times when people see things are working for them working for them and all of a sudden you start feeling like i'm so super I'm, I'm so good i'm so grand in myself i know too much no it just could be the covering over your life is what is working for you the day you remove don't try to see if it will work or not because the day you remove you will not be alive to tell the story how the covering did work you know the woman the, the woman the syrophoenician woman when jesus looked at her you know and i was telling the church some a while ago jesus looked at her and said ah what is meant for children are not given to dogs you know i know say no problem sir no problem and I, I i mean it's amazing to know that jesus will look at a woman and call her a dog jesus called her a dog and the woman said i'm not even offended call me anything you like i'm not going to even allow offense stop me from assessing my next level and so sometimes when your season comes the first thing the devil tries to present to you is offense I didn't like the way pastors spoke to me. I didn't like the way they instructed me. I didn't like the way that sister is talking to me. When you start considering all that, you are about to lose out in the season that God has prepared for you. But you know what the woman says? The woman says, no problem, sir. Even the dogs, even the um, whatever, the dogs, yeah? They eat the crumbs that fall from the table. So the woman simply printed a graphic picture. I says, I'm aware. I don't know about you whether it happens here in a, okay, you like dogs a lot, so you know that. He says, sometimes when you are eating, dogs will come under the table. And so as far as they are under the table, something will drop from the table. And as it's dropping from the table, they must collect something. In other words, the woman said, call me whatever you like, sir. No problem. I'm under a covering. Once I, I don't need to be at the table, I'm under the table. It's okay, sir. As he's dropping, my hand is there collecting. So there are things that were not originally meant for me. Let me just be under the covering. It might not be for me. It might be for the other sister down there. But as long as I'm under the covering, that thing will find a way to meet me where I am. If you understand what I'm saying, look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I like it here. Say it one more time. Say, I like it here. I have, and I'm, I'm saying this from the, the depth of my heart, one of the most beautiful hearts I've ever seen. Beautiful hearts, when I mean beautiful hearts. Um, a woman who loves the Lord and loves the Lord. When we finished last night in the atmosphere of the Spirit, she said to me, this is what the Holy Spirit wants me to do. And I did it, and she did it right. I said, how does someone love the Lord like this? No pretenses, no drama, no, and all, you know, a yearning and a hunger in the heart of God. And I keep saying it. I keep saying it, any day you stop getting hungry for God, that is the day you'll be moving down a slippery slope at an alarming speed. But your hunger for God shows the kind of capacity you can carry. The Spirit of God told me many years ago, and he said, the day you stop getting hungry is the day you will lose your relevance. And so some people don't understand why you come to church and you're focused, you're shouting the loudest amen. You're acting like you're the only one that came in here. No, sir, I'm not mad, I'm just hungry. You understand what I'm saying? I'm just hungry. And when I'm hungry, you know, when you are hungry, you're hungry. I don't know how many of you, in, in America, people don't get hungry here. But in, in Nigeria, we really get hungry. You know, so because right now, there, there are too many things to nibble on. There's juice in the fridge. There's, it's not like that's where I'm coming from. Sometimes you get hungry and the only thing you need to do is to get to a restaurant and eat. And when you're hungry, you find out some things will not be registering again. There are things that are not sticking again you are, and all that. There, if you're hungry and somebody tell, is telling you, ah, you know that guy called you stupid and all that. He said, eh, that's his business now. Let me just go and find food and eat. It's when you finish eating that you turn around and say, eh, that thing you were telling me that time. Who, who, who even called me? You know, the reason why you are focusing on some things is that you're not hungry. There's a way you'll be hungry for God that all the nonsense people are saying, you are not even hearing it. Because the, the, the psalmist say in a dry and weary land where there is no water, my soul is thirsty for. There's a place where I'm sitting and all I'm doing is just a hunger for more of God. This is a church that has to be perpetually hungry. We're perpetually hungry. They don't understand why you're hungry. Why do you pray the way you pray? But they don't understand there's something about the zeal of our father's house that has totally consumed us. 
And I want to say thank you so much, the first lady of the house, Pastor Joyce. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. You know why I'm spending time on these ones? Ministry is not jollof rice. Do you understand what I'm saying? Ministry is not beans. It's not beans. Even if not beans, sorry, even if it is beans, it's still not, you understand what I'm saying? It's not, it's not easy because I know what it is. And I just intentionally look back and I said, wow, in this past one year, these guys have been amazing. Because I just recorded, I said, times when I've had to speak with Pastor GT severally and he's trying to figure out a member is in, ha having an issue, a member is in a hospital, a member needs prayers, a member needs, there are times when, and you know the truth is that members never know that pastors have problems. No, how can you have a problem? You don't have a problem? One of my members came to say, Pastor, you know the reason why I love you is that you don't have a problem. <laughs> I say, yes, I don't have a problem. Thank you. I don't have a problem. He said, that's the reason why I love you. You don't have a problem. It's not these pastors that have problems up and down. <laughs> Are you for real? Did you just say that? <laughs> and this is where it hurts. This is where it hurts. Every other time you bleed, you let the wound open and it heals faster. When your pastor bleeds, he covers it and the wounds get bigger. And that's the reason why you need to constantly put him in prayers. Excuse him. Sometimes, oh, the way he spoke to me, he didn't speak to you because he wanted to speak to you that way. It's just a pressure of one other, three other members that have spoken to him over the week and he's carrying their burden on their shoulder. And can we celebrate Pastor GT and his dear wife? I love you too from the depth of my heart. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Please take your seat. And to every one person, please, please, today is anniversary. Allow me, I think. I will not be here next Sunday. I won't be here for a long time to come. So as I am here, just allow me. I think you're happy to see me. Right? So just allow me and I want to appreciate, take my time and appreciate everyone who's been working hard. There's some people I've already known, Pastor Ahiz, um, uh, Pastor Martins, there are people I know, Mr. Martins, uh, um, 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 uh, Yeka, uh, Sean, Sean, Sean. I keep hearing Sean, 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 uh, Sean, Sean, Sean. And all the people that I know, um, um, many people here, the people I got to meet yesterday, you know how it is. I've come for another year and I'm seeing new faces I've never met and all that. And and they are telling me, oh, this one is from here. This one's a black American. I say, yeah, that's the way we roll here. And, and I'm seeing very fantastic people. This one's from Jamaica. I say, yeah, that's where. Yo, I, I'm going to want to tell you something. Yeah, yeah, yeah man, yeah, man, yeah. So, and, and I'm very excited to meet all of you. Yes, that's excited, how excited I am. I'm really very excited, and I want to appreciate you. And for all of you who just um, kept sending me messages on social media, say, Pastor, I'm coming, I'm coming to see you. You have come to see me. You are not going back. You are remaining here. You didn't, you didn't just come to see me. I have come, and you have come, and we will germinate in this house. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm very excited to be here. Oh, I was right. So, Pastor Rema. And you, this, you have been amazing from the start of, the, of this commission till now. Thank you so much. We appreciate. We can never take it for granted. Thank you so much. And your, your prophetess wife. God honor the two of you. God bless the two of you in the name of Jesus. And to every other person, I say God bless you in Jesus' name. So, and we started reading something yesterday. And I believe that God blessed us so massively from what we read um, yesterday. And I, if you don't mind, we're going back to the book of Zacharias, chapter 4 again. And we'll start reading from verse 1 um, to verse 10 again. Uh, Zacharias chapter 4 from verse 1. I mean, we could just read from verse 1 to verse 13. If you don't mind, can I beg you to stand for the reading of God's word? Zacharias chapter 4 from verse 1 to 13. <clears throat> can we read together? Church 1 to go. And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep and said unto me, what seest thou? And I said, I have looked and behold a candlestick all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it and his seven lamps thereon and seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof and two olive trees by it one upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side thereof and so I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me saying what are these my lord and then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me knowest thou not what these be and I said no my lord then he answered and spake unto me saying this is 
is the word of the Lord unto Zeru. Can I ask you to please drop Zerubbabel? We don't know who he is and put your name there. This is the word of the Lord unto Jerry, saying, Not by mind nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings crying grace grace unto it moreover the word of the Lord came unto me saying the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house his hands shall also finish it and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you for who had despised the day of small things for they shall rejoice and see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven they are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro through the whole earth. We can stop there. Our Father we thank you oh God. Father it's been written of us in the volumes of your book and we ask that you make your word your will your desire made known unto us at this time Lord. Lord we ask that you turn the chapters of our lives as your word comes forth. We lay down our shield. We lay down our understanding. We lay down every mentality that can obstruct the free flow of your word and we make ourselves a accessible and vulnerable to your words and we say have your way in our lives let a lover of the Lord say it louder amen, amen. do take your seat in the presence of God I continue from where I stopped last night and this was a said um, 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 a revelation or a vision given to prophet Zacharias as it were and um, in the revelation the angel had to ask the man of God and say what do you see and the man of God say I see this particular type of light as he begins to describe it he say I see a lampstand and it's got seven branches and it says away from that <laughs> excuse me away from that I see an olive tree by the right I see an olive tree by the left if you look at the description of the light as Zechariah was trying to explain you probably will realize that Zechariah was speaking about the light that I told you of that God spoke to Moses about to design and put in the temple in Exodus chapter 25 and Exodus 31 and the light was otherwise known as the menorah and then uh, the, when the man of God or the angel asked Zechariah what do you see and the man of God said uh, you see sir I, I think I see light as it were and I'm not seeing ordinary light remember I took time uh, to dwell on this particular thing um, uh, um, um, yesterday and he says I don't see I see a light that has one stand but it's got seven branches that is what I see and child of God yesterday God began to let us know that it can still be the you that you know uh, but there are going to be different parts of you that is going to spring up in this season it is still the same Jerry but you're going to find light in different areas of your life and then we went further again by the way when God gave um, uh, Moses the design of this light that was going to be in the temple I love this so much and then he said to Moses you know what there's somebody I've given this skill in order to bring this architectural plan of this light to become a reality and he says the person that's going to do it is the man known as Bazalel it's a man that I have grace with wisdom uncommon wisdom and common knowledge and common understanding as a man that is skillful in craft in art in all manner of learning he says this is the man that will be able to handle this light let me say one more time he says this is the man that is going to be able to handle this light and bring it to reality let me say this and, and uh, please uh, never ask yourself uh, why are some people irritated by my light why don't they like my progress what is it about me that unsettles my colleague at work remember this kind of peculiar light God looked at everyone that was around and says no they don't have the capacity to handle this light I'm gonna choose one man and he's going to choose his team and they are the ones that can handle how great this light is just in case there's somebody around you that feels irritated by your presence the truth is that they cannot handle your light and so for this particular light that Zechariah was seeing the man of God said to him or the scripture tells us 
that the only person who could handle this light in the Bible times was Bazalel. Was Bazalel because he was wise, he was understanding, he was skillful, he was good in all manner of learning. And so you're going to go through times and seasons in your life where you wonder, am I not intelligent enough to be liked? Don't I have a lot of capacity to be liked? The truth is that it is not you, it is them. They can handle you. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, if you have a problem with me, say it again like you mean it. Tell your neighbor, say, if you have a problem with me, it's not me, it's you. Tell your neighbor, you can't handle my light. Say it again like you mean it. Say, you can't handle my light. Listen, you need men like Basaliel to understand how do you come to a house and then you see one light with seven bulbs at the same time. I mean, or God start with one light first, from one to the other one, from the other one to the other one. How do you come at once and every area has lights at the same time? It's going to irritate people who are going through the natural process. It's going to get some people upset and they wonder how come this and that and that and that are happening in your life at the same time. Uh, you better announce to them and say, get used to it, get used to it. People like us shine lights in different areas at the same time. You better get used to a capacity because I am not just meant to shine in one area, but every area of my life receives light at the same time. And it, just in case you don't understand it, my light wasn't meant for you. You know, the truth is that high-end shops are not meant for everybody. Am I, am I correct? High-end shops are not meant for everybody. There are people, oh no, you know how it is that you look at some things, I still do it till tomorrow. You know, you look at some things, say, how does someone buy a shoe? I, I mean, um, uh, I remember some time ago, um, someone walked into my office and then um, I said to her, oh, in Nigeria, you can imagine Nigeria. I said, well, your shoe is really nice, sister. And she said, it's fine, yeah, pastor, yeah. Um, and then she told me how many dollars she bought it, so because I I couldn't I said, so Nigerian money, how much is it? And I said, about 1.2 million. I said, Chinek and Nayeje issue. Like, did you use 1.2 million naira to wear shoe and put it on the ground? Why didn't it lift you up? You should just be walking in the air by reason of the shoe that you got. You know what? I swallowed the way I felt. I couldn't wait for her to leave. And I was waiting for my pastors to come in. As soon as the guy said, can you imagine that sister that just walked here? That she told me that her shoe, she used one point. I was so upset. 1.2 million to buy shoe. Look at them. Look at the way they are wasting money. Pastor, keep quiet. You can't handle it. You can't handle it. The light is bigger than your understanding. And so this is the way it is. Some people cannot handle you. And all the do is to run their mouth you have not been created to roll with the chickens and so just in case you are irritated by my line it's okay you cannot handle my lights and when you win not everybody will clap did you hear what I just said right now? When you win, not everybody will clap. You know why? They can't handle you. And the truth is that why should it be you all the time? Why did you win here? Why did you win there? Why did you, why, why, why? The more they ask why, the more God opens another door. The more they say, why should it be you? The more God opens another door. Please help me give your neighbor a little shoulder and tell your neighbor you can't handle the light that is coming. On my way, tell your neighbor, can you handle it? Tell your neighbor, Say, can you handle it? Ask your neighbor, can you handle it? Ask your neighbor, I say, can you handle it? If you understand it, can you shout yes? yes. And so no matter how bad I felt, that somebody was using 1.2 million naira to put on the ground, and I was complaining, and I said, and I had in my company people who were like me as well, because all of us, none of my pastors told me, oh, pastor, that's their level, none of them, every no, sir, it's wrong. All these people, rich people, they would just be using 1.2 million naira to buy shoe. Why? Yes, yeah, and we're all angry, and we're just angry, and all that, and when I finished, not too long, my wife entered. I told my wife the story, said, now what to fear, what? Why are people doing this type of thing? I know that the next day my wife brought up the matter again with me and said, buddy, that's, I've, I've still been thinking about that 1.2 million now. I said, me, I thought about it last night and I made up my mind that poverty is worrying us. There is a level where you will get to and you discover that these things are supposed to be your natural way of life. That is the truth. That is the truth. Why are you not going to buy everything at $1 shop? You started from there, but that's not where you are. You are making in progress you are moving and you're living according to the 
capacity that God has given you. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, can you handle my light? Can I prophesy to you as streams of joy enters in the second year? Radi Balabaha, the kind of light is about to shine on your life, in your family. I decree and declare you have never seen it before. You have never seen it before. 24 hours after this meeting, may it become your reality. May it become your reality. Receive it right now. 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 Let your amen turn down. Take your seat. You know the reason some people cannot handle your light. And, and, and um, this one I came to America, I guess the day we came in, um, somebody sent me a message and sent to me, Pastor, that place that you prayed for me, the job that you prayed for me, and gave me a prophetic word. You know, there are people who know how to do this kind of thing. He said, that word, that, that job you prayed for me and gave me a prophetic word, you say I should go and receive it. Pastor, I've gone for the interview, the last stage of the interview. I finished, they said that I failed. And Pastor, I want to let you know, as I was coming out, they now sent me a proper email. And to send me an email and told me that I failed. And all that. And because I failed, I don't have opportunity to get anything in that organization. And the person said, Pastor, I just sent you this test to inform you that I have failed. And that word that you gave me did not work. <laughs> yes, if I had my phone, I would have shown you. He said, that word did not work. I replied the message. I said, go and tell the people that send the email that the email is wrong. I said, me, I know the word that I gave you. By two immutable things, it is impossible for God to lie. I said, go and tell them that I said that the email is wrong. He replied me, say, Pastor, I will do it though. Are you saying I should do it? I said, go and do it. And once I sent it, the devil came and whispered to me, he's still your member. Remember, you will not live in America forever. When you finish, you're coming back. People of God, when you know the God you serve. The Bible says, they that do know their God will be strong and they will do exploits. And then he said, Pastor, I typed the email. He said, I use exactly the same words that you used when you were talking to me. I think that this um, 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 failure, they've told you you failed at the, at the interview. Wrote you, now added an email in order to cement it. And then he replied, wrote HR back. I said, you sent me the wrong email. I couldn't have failed in this interview and sent it to them. Do you know, he said to me 10 minutes later, while he was still on the way going, HR replied and said, wow, that was a mistake. How did you find out? Please, can you come back and take your appointment letter? What God cannot do does not exist. Let me announce to seven persons here under the sound of my voice, wherever you had no, wherever you had no, wherever you had no, in another 21 days, you will get a yes. 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 You will get a yes let your amen turn down take your seat and so you got to let them know are you prepared for my light can you handle my light because it's going to be bigger and people of God remember and the man of God says I saw I saw in that in that revelation when I saw the menorah the light the lamp stand has got seven branches I saw by the side an olive tree on the right and an olive tree on the left I'm sure some of you know what I'm about to say but let me repeat it for emphasis um you have heard before that the average light of an olive tree the average life of an olive tree is average life is between 500 to 700 years I didn't say 50 years or 70 years 500 to 700 years and they say that an olive tree can actually live as long as 5,000 years notice carefully that the man was seeing a revelation we are the source of the oil of the particular lamp, the oil that was entering this lamp, and that is the, represented by the two olive trees by the two sides. And the, the menorah itself, the lamp, does not have the capacity to stay for as long as 500 years. But what was supplying the oil was going to outlive the lamp. 
You didn't hear what I just said. That what was going to supply in the oil was going to outlive the lamp. And so it will never be said that the oil was looking for supply. But it will be said that the olive was looking for the lamp. And so one thing that God wants you to know, those who think that the supply flowing from God to you is about to end, they're going to wait for a very long time. No, you didn't hear what I just said right now. I said they are going to wait for a very long time. I said they are going to wait for a very long time. If you understand it, can you shout it louder? Yes. And it is flowing. It is flowing. It is flowing. And the supply was just ended. And then you look at it and just ask yourself, yeah, how many years? How many years? An olive tree. Let's even look at an olive tree staying for 5,000 years. But the owner of the lamp, but the people, but everyone, the lamp would have finished and the supply would still be there. Waiting for the oil. I say, is there any lamp that I can supply oil to? And this is why. Never worry about what will become of your children. There's a supply that will outlive you. Never worry what will become of my ministry. There's a supply that will outlive you. Never worry what will become of my career. I am getting a supply. Not just for me alone. There is a supply that we I'll leave me when the Bible says he daily loaded you with benefits you see if you're in America you don't understand this English it is those of us who live in Nigeria that will understand load he daily loaded you with benefits which means that when he loads you there is a likelihood that you will not have finished the one for today because what he didn't give you benefits eh did you hear what I just said? How many of you know that he didn't give you benefit? The Bible says he does what? He loads you with benefit. When he load, when you know the way we load cars in Nigeria, when we load, the way we load, load properly, load, conductor, some of you, God has always helped you. That's why, you know, that, I mean, if you, Bible is better explained from Nigeria perspective. Because you know, when they are loading the vehicle, and then you are telling the driver, oh God, there's no space here. And then they will tell you, this is the way everybody has been sitting. Shifts. Where three people usually sit, six people will sit there. And when they finish sitting, then conductor will come in again. And then we'll sit this way. How many, how many of you ever experienced that? And then we'll sit this way. And then say, push your leg. Let me, and all that. And then everybody is looking like sardine inside the car. That is what is called load. So he daily loaded me with benefits. So I will not finish the one for today. And then he will come again tomorrow morning. Because the Bible says his mercies are new every morning. He comes again and loads me again. I say, oh God, excuse me sir. I'm not even finished the one. Have he says, I'm under mandate. I am not here to finish waiting for you to finish consuming. Every day, mercy rolls out a load of benefits. Every day, mercy rolls out. And loading me, loading me. If you understand, I shall yes. yes. And that's why the psalmist says, You are not my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. You know, the truth is that the reason why it's running over is not because you want to waste. No, sir. No, 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 no. You're not a wasteful God. But the truth is that you have looked at, you know, the psalmist said, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Let me tell you, when a table is prepared before you in the presence of your enemies, they have a tendency to explain it away. Is it that, that a, 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 a plate? There's nothing inside it. There's nothing inside it. Me, I've seen that type of thing. When they just put it, there's nothing. You know, there are people say, ah, streams of joy in America. Nothing is happening there. Nothing is happening there. And God said, is that what you said? You mean there's nothing that is happening there? Eh? And the psalmist says, what you now focus on. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. And then you look at what they are saying. You realize that the problem is not with the table. The problem is with me. So you no longer go for the table. You go for me. 
you now anoint my head with oil. Because you know what? You want to give me the capacity to reproduce the table. So you do not just, it's no longer about, Lord, when is the table being prepared for me? No, I have given you an oil. And he said, thou anointest my head with oil. And once the oil is on my head, my cup begins to run over. And remember, he prepared this table in front of some people. So the reason why the cup needs to run over, they need to see what is inside. Am I talking to someone? Look at your neighbor, say there's something in the inside. Oh, that was a wrong neighbor, they don't understand. Look at another, say there's something on the inside. Say right now, say right now, whatsoever that is on the inside, right now, come out. And so this is the way it is. And then he prepares, and then he says something very strategically. He says, I saw the two olive trees. Excuse me. <clears throat> he says, I saw the two olive trees. One was pouring on the inside. Oh, meanwhile, did I finish that testimony of that, my young man? Very powerful testimony. I like when God does things that, the things that make me happy. No, that immediately sent to me, you say, Pastor, they've written me, I've gone back there. The HR was saying, can you come back to me? He said, ah, that he, he can't come back, oh. That he can't come back, that they should better than the other side. And by the time they gave him the letter, he snapped it. He said, Pastor, this is our letter. I said, okay, Monaghi, yes, it is our letter. Because what God cannot do does not exist. Carry it at the back of your mind. Every rejection, you say, eh, maybe that's the way God wants it. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. That is, you go back and tell God, this is not part of the covenant. This is not what you told me. This is not what you said to me. And you cancel all that needs to be canceled. The Bible says when you become restless. The truth of the matter is that you are too relaxed. When you become restless. Can I tell you about a man called Cain in the Bible? God looks at the man. After he did what he did to his brother. God began to curse him. Release the curse upon his life. Curse him this. Curse him that. Curse him. God did you shall be a vagabond. And all that. Cain looked at God. I said, God, this punishment is too much. Even if I kill my brother, is that why you should punish me like this? And God reduced it. Go and read your Bible. And God said, no problem. I will reduce it for you. Because a man even looked, Cain, so you still have mouth. You killed your brother and God is trying to punish you. If Cain, an ungodly man, can appeal to the mercies of God. What about you, a candidate of mercy? Some things are going wrong. You cannot tell God, ah, I am neighbor Shara. I am not supposed to be here. This is not part of the covenant. I am not supposed to be suffering this. And a man that was cursed and called a vagabond. The Bible says, and can build cities. He built a city after he was cursed. If a cursed man can build a city, what will a blessed man build? If a man that was cursed can build a city, do we know who we are? And every time the devil says, you are nobody, things are not here, so I set it the way you are, things are going to continue. And then you think that God will forever feel for you because of the way you are feeling for yourself. I am not. Things are just a, a rise. Arise from the dust. Shake off the dust from yourself and tell yourself, I'm not going to allow this nonsense continue. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. Like the young man I just told you about, I'm talking to you about what happened not up to 48 hours ago. Go back and turn the report around. Go back and look at the eye of the devil and say, you see this thing? I'm not taking it. Give the devil some deadlines. Give the devil, tell the devil from now to the next 21 days. I remember praying for young women. We have a prayer meeting where we pray for young women who want to get married in our, in our church. So every now and then, every second Tuesday or first Tuesday, I've forgotten. We gather them together and we release prophetic blessings over there. Because there's no time to waste. The party must hold. Are you understanding what I'm saying? There are, part, there are parties that are long overdue. Can I pray for seven people here? Any 
anybody whose party is overdue, child dedication, wedding party, anything that you need to do that will bring people to rejoice with you, can I pray for you in the next 40 days? Let there be a sound of celebration in your house. Receive it right now. 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 Let your amen resound. Kaleba Rosha. With a loud voice, shall say the party must hold. Your neighbor does not understand what you're saying. But can you scream it louder and say the party must hold? Shout it like you lost your mind and say, the party must hold. Shout it, let the devil know that you, are, you have lost a bit of your mind. And scream, say, the party must hold. Tell your neighbor, say, I have set the date. Say, I have set the date. Say, neighbor, neighbor, before the end of August. Before the end of August. I'm talking to seven people. Better take me seriously. Before the end of August. Say it before the end of August. You will hear my shout of celebration. Somebody shout. Somebody shout. Take your seat, people. And guess what? This lady. We finished and I was just making a casual statement. The way I usually make a casual statement, I, I say some of you here. I was telling the young guy, I say some of you here right now, go and start pricing wedding gown. I say, when you go, just so go and buy your wedding shoes. Go and go, go and look at wedding shoes, you know, touch them and all that. The lady took it to the next level. She said she went and you know, there are the I don't know whether they do it here. There are already prepared uh, wedding cards that when you buy them, you now print on it. So she told me the first thing she did was she went and bought. She said that as I'm buying this thing, my husband would pay for it. So she bought the wedding cards and then kept. Went and bought her wedding gown and kept. Went and bought her wedding shoe. No man has come. No man is even saying hi. She went and bought and everything she was buying them and she was keeping she was buying them she said one night she had a dream and somebody was telling her that she needs to start buying the gifts the gifts that uh, sorry i don't know whether you people do it here souvenirs right i don't know whether you people give souvenirs and then you got souvenir in america uh, so uh, party party favors oh, wow. <laughs> my people need to hear the new name oh. no more survey i got yeah, you see why it's good to travel. It's why it's good to travel. They will be calling it in Nigeria, souvenir, souvenir. It's called party favors. So, and the, the, the thing now told her to go and buy party favors. Yes. And then she went and bought all those party favors. And then by the time she finished buying that one, she said it was when depression wanted to enter. That the devil now began to ask her, you mean you really went to buy these things? <laughs> Did you really go to buy these things? That she said that child, that is what pastor told them. <laughs> it's what pastor told them. That she now began to tell God, God, please have mercy on me. God, just help me. Just help me. Anyhow you can help me. Help me. So that day she's on my, um, uh, she's on my, um, um, on my broadcast list on, on, on my phone. So that day, I wasn't even, I sent a broadcast to everybody. I just said, that word you have received from God is valid. I said, please continue to act in faith. Don't let anything stop you. She replied me, say, pastor, this is my word. This is my word. And she didn't tell me why she was saying it was her word. And then people, two weeks after that, she was walking on the road. A young man met her, stopped the car, walked out of the car, said, excuse me, I want to marry you. She looked at the young man. Is that the way they used to marry? <laughs> you meet somebody on the road, I don't know you from anywhere, and you're saying, and all that, because I told them that there are crazy things that are about to happen. How can your miracle be normal again? You yourself, you're waiting. Why you have waited this way? Is it normal? 
You have waited in an abnormal way. Why should the miracle now become normal on top of it? Abnormal waiting guarantees abnormal miracle. And then the, she said when she wanted to act like a lady, you know, no, you don't, you don't walk up to me. And that she remembered this is what she has been praying about. <laughs> that she now asked the man, are you sure? This thing you are telling me. The man said, you are the one I'm supposed to marry. I know it. I've been looking. I just came in from abroad. Ah, abroad. <laughs> On top of it. The next thing the devil told her, this man is carrying disease. <laughs> He's looking for who to infect. People of God, cut the entire long story short. This young woman is abroad. Yes. This young woman is in Spain. The young man came and they are living well. The young man is no fraud. The young man is not a, nothing is, nothing is wrong. It's just that a lady prepared ahead of time. We already have more supplies than we need. It's already been made available. The problem is that you are blocking off your access with your mentality. You're looking and you're trying to put God into your program. And God is saying, can I put you in my own program? Your program is too small to put me inside. Because you don't understand the kind of capacity you have in me. And you know what? The man of God says, what I saw flowing was an olive tree on the right. And I saw an olive tree on the left and he said the oil was flowing and you know people of God for those of us who are not left handed you know that your right hand is the place of your strength and then your left hand is the place of your weakness and then he said I saw olive tree flowing putting oil inside the menorah in the place of strength there was oil oil was flowing but he said I saw something very strategic even in the place of weakness you know this your weakness is the reason why the devil keeps reminding you you can't get flow from this area you don't have the certificate they are looking for you don't have the capacity they need you don't have so so and so this is why in the place of your weakness nothing will flow but I came to tell you the devil is a liar you are made complete in him who is the head of all principalities and powers even in the place of my weakness I will get access even in the blade of my weakness I will if you believe it can you turn that louder amen? amen even in the place of your weakness even in the place where you never felt even in very own strategic places I was sharing this in church just before I came I went to preach in Abuja and then I finished preaching and then I got into the plane and we're about to come back and when we got into the plane about then where I was sitting in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the compartment of the place. So I was sitting. So I just noticed a man who was very restless. He would just move and move and move. And uh, that day was one of those days that I, 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 didn't, I didn't, I just felt like I was too tired. And, and then he was so restless. So I just looked up, looked at the man and smiled. I said, are you okay? In my characteristic manner of asking people, are you okay? He said, are you okay? He said, no. He asked me to come. I said, because the plane was already, we're flying already. I said, you want me to come over to where you, he said, I, I, he said, yes. I walked, I walked over, I sat down. He said, I am not comfortable. I said, why? He said, every time I fly Nigerian plane, I am not comfortable. I said, you are not comfortable, but I am here. Nothing happens when I'm here. Nothing. I said, nothing happens. I said, relax. Nothing is going on. All of a sudden, there was a minor turbulence. He said, this is that thing I'm talking about. I said, what thing you are talking about? I said, Oga, can I introduce myself? I am a man on assignment. I said, listen, I don't know about other people. I said, until I'm done, I'm not going anywhere. I say, even if you have done something wrong, I am the reason why we will land smoothly. And I told him to prove to you the calling upon my life. From now henceforth, no more turbulence. I say, you will know that God called me. You will not experience anything. He said, are you sure? I said, take this word and relax. People of God, you know when you make such utterances, you know your problem is that you have said nothing. And the devil doesn't want you to say it. As soon as I said that, the devil came. Pastor, did you just say, how, how many times have you flown and there was no turbulence? And you are telling this man, what about the landing time? The devil was just telling me different area. I just said, I have said it. If God likes, let him do it. 
If he likes, let him not do it. I said it in his name. So it's not me that will be ashamed. It is God that will be ashamed. So I have spoken the word, but you know what? There's a capacity of oil that you carry. Don't let me go back to the oil matter of last night. There's an oil that you carry. Even the winds and the waves will understand that a man of destiny has spoken. That is how there was no turbulence. And then we went, even as we were landing, we didn't, he told me, pastor, because he said, this is the smoothest flight I've ever been on. I said, I told you, nothing will happen. He said, ah, that early in the morning, this is where the testimony is. He said, early in the morning, in the place of your weakness, early in the morning. And that time, I had begged God. I said, God, remember me. I am, I'm working for you. Remember me. It's not okay the way things are. Remember me. He said, pastor, in the morning, he said, there, there is these dollars I've been, I've been saving. So this morning, I just gathered them, put them in my bag. And I didn't know why I gathered them. He said, they are quite a lot. Oh. And I gathered them and put them in my bag. He said, now I believe you are the one that God wanted me to give it to. He said, I am thinking you are. I said, ah, don't think. Don't think. If you think, I will not be happy with you. I am the one. I am the one. Oh, have you not heard that they will gather their money and they will lay it off for you? I said, I'm the one, don't think again. And then as soon as we, he brought down one very fine bag. For, you know, there are people that, eh, you see their bag, you know, this person is going somewhere in destiny. He's not just traveling, he's going somewhere in destiny. And then he brought out the bag, rolled out the, ah, yeah, so, palaha. so as soon as I saw it, I pretended like I didn't see it. And he touched me, say, he said, man of God, can you just take it? I say, yes. I say, you know what? I want to release blessings. Can you kneel down? Just find a way to kneel. You have to kneel down. You have to kneel down because this money needs a kneeling down. And so that I can pray it into you. And by the time I was done, I realized, even in the place where you are not expecting, even in the place where you feel, can anything good come out of here? You could walk into a mall and a miracle will be waiting. You could walk into the most unlikely place and a miracle will be waiting. Please don't confine your miracle to a system. Don't confine, confine your divine delivery. This is how it's going to work. I am waiting on that man. Until they call me, I won't get it. Until my salary comes, I won't get it. Until so and so comes, I won't get it. Wait, you have entered a season of shockers. You are going to get shocked. The person will not have come, but you will get it. They will not have given you what it is, but you will still get it. If you understand it, can you shout yes? yes. And people of God, that is the way. And he said, I saw a flow of oil, even from the right. And he said, even from the left, there was a flow. In other words, that particular menorah had more light than it needed. Had more oil rather than it needed. He had more oil, oil flowing from the left, oil flowing from the right. And more than it needed. As streams of joy enters this second year, I pray for you. You will have more than you ever needed. No, you didn't hear me. I say you will have more than you ever needed. I say you will have more than you ever needed. I say you will have more than you ever needed. If you believe it, can you turn that louder? Amen. Amen. And then he said, as I get ready to tidy up, he said, you see, this entire thing that we're talking about, this entire revelation I'm showing you, eh? and I'm asking you a question you're answering, he says, now go and tell Zerubbabel. He said, all this while I'm lying you, it's not for you. I'm giving you a vision for another man. All this thing I'm showing you, what do you see? What are you doing? What are you doing? And, and I'm getting you to get focused. It's not for you. So Zerubbabel was somewhere doing his own thing. And God was disturbing another man. Granting the man vision, arranging something supernaturally for Zerubbabel. As Zachariah was in the vision for Zerubbabel. While you are here now, sitting and looking at me, angels have gone on assignment. They've walked into an office and they are opening a file. They are talking to someone. 
they are speaking to someone they are arranging something in your favor I am not speaking to everybody but by Monday morning you're gonna see this thing that I've just spoken right now somebody is being disturbed because of you right now some things are changing because of you right now some things have been rewritten because of you right now if you believe it let your amen thunder like you understand let your amen thunder like you believe it and it says, tell Zerubbabel, it is not by might. It is not by power. He said, it is by my spirit. And then he begins to address the obstacle. Meanwhile, Zeru was not there. They've released a prophecy over Zeru. And then, after a while, went to the obstacle. Now began to ask, who are thou, O mountain, before Zeru? You shall become a plane. Meanwhile, Kai, to look at things working for a man that was not even present. They were addressing his obstacle in his absence. They were talking about it in his absence. Who are thou? Zachariah and Angel talking. And God was settling an obstacle. And yet, Zerubbabel, I know, I know there are things that you are calling obstacles. You are not present right now. You are not there right now. But can I assure you, you are getting back to work not to find it. They are giving you a call, not to you. It's no longer there. They are going to give you a call and you're going to say, yeah, this was that thing that Pastor Jerry was talking about on Sunday. Zerubbabel was not present and his life was being arranged. The obstacles were being taken out of the way. Things were aligning even when he was not present. He said, who are thou, O mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shall become a plain." Ah, and God said, I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. You know, I like the way God talks. He says, eh, it's not just that you mountain will become a plain. Now, Zerubbabel will build from the place of this mountain. He said, you shall now raise the headstone thereof. A house will rise from the place of your obstacle. Something new is coming out of the... He said, I will not be satisfied to level your mountain. That is not where the miracle is. Now, the bigger miracle is that from this place... Something Kayada Bashada, a place that Ayana Basila that did not allow me to move, is now the same place where I am raising something new. Yet de Leborosha, a place that did not allow me to make a headway, is now the place something new is arising from. Am I talking to someone? And he says, Go and tell Zerubbabel. He went down, like I said yesterday. He said, Who has despised? The what? If you were here last night, who had despised what? Oh, some people are still getting that scripture wrong. He said, who has despised? The day. The day of small beginnings. My small beginnings are not in days. It's in a day. Yes, sir. I'm not going to be small in days. No, it's not going to remain like this. It's not going to remain like this. Small beginnings are in, is in a day. He says, but your next season, next season, higher levels, I, you know, there's nothing when you want to. The, the, I, before I came, while we're praying on the 1st of August, the Spirit of God said to me that he was releasing the same grace that he has given streams of joy to the members of our congregation. And then we started praying into it. If you never, you, you are wondering what a miracle looks like, look at streams of joy. I said, this one is a miracle. It's a miracle. If you are wondering, this is why you need to connect yourself to a place that works. Because anyhow, and Never. Let me tell you, the anointing you ridicule and look down on is the anointing that will insult you. If you know there's grace anywhere, don't explain it away. Don't give it to, just say, yeah, I connect to this thing. I believe in this thing. I sow into this and I receive it. Child of God, there are things that don't make sense. Streams of joy is one of the things that don't make sense. No, sit back and think about it. It's one of the things that don't make sense. How do you do? You've done two years now. You're going to Canada. And all that, everything is set. Every somebody pay everything. Pay, oh, oh, everything is ready. Just pass, Jerry. Come where I want you. Come, just come so that we can start. They are not ten. They are not twenty. They are not thirty. And then you are asking yourself, how do these things happen? Let me tell you. If you think it is easy, go and try. This is when grace speaks. 
humanity remains silent. And there's a level you get to. And, and this is why God brought you here today. God brought you here today. And I was speaking with a pastor early this morning. I went to preach in Mina. And the pastor and I were talking this morning. Uh, I don't know whether it's Nigeria morning or I don't know. But we shall were talking in the morning. Something that looks like morning. And then he says to me, he said, ever since you left pastor, he said, the miracles are unbelievable. He said, let me. He said, the miracles, he specifically said the miracles from, because God led me to raise some sacrificial seeds. He said, the miracle from the sowing, the miracle from different, he says, they are a lot. He said, pastor, I think even from the things you did not say, miracles happened. Beyond what a man of God says, find out the trajectory of grace that men of God carry and key into their grace. Sometimes they don't say things in line with their grace. But you have understanding. You say, yeah, this is the kind of grace that this person carries. And you align and get all that you have to get. There are times when all you need. is not every. Apostle Paul looks at the other, his people and says, you are all partakers of my grace. You are, all, you are partaking of the, you are partaking. So, which means I can actually partake of a grace that was not released to me. Am I communicating? The days of his power is now. I feel so excited in my spirit. And I believe that as I speak over your life, God is ushering you to your next season where your supply will be bigger than you. Would you stand on your feet and just begin to speak in the Holy Ghost? Would you stand on your feet and just begin to speak in the Holy Ghost? in the name of Jesus by tomorrow we're going to be having serious impartation service tomorrow evening pastor already said to us it's going to be a prayer and impartation evening but please can you just raise your two hands as I make this declaration, the Spirit of God has put in my spirit over the life of everyone who will be present here. And please, all you need to do is as the de declaration comes, I want you to say an amen. And people of God, please remember, amen is not an encouragement to the preacher. Amen is not to ginger the preacher. No, sir. Amen is to say, I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. And I am going to be releasing this declaration over your life in the second half remaining days of the year. It's a transition and this shall be your reality. Hear me as I hear the Lord. In this season of your life, you will not lack helpers. I say you will not lack helpers. As your amen will resound, receive the gift of man. Receive the gift of man. Receive the gift of man. Every demonic delay and stagnation is broken over your life. I say they are broken over your life. Diseases and sicknesses are broken of your life. They are broken of your life. They are broken of your life. Of your life. Whatever represents rising and falling is broken. You will not rise and fall. You will not rise and fall. You will not rise and fall. In the name of Jesus. As a church will decree, streams of joy will not rise and fall. We will not rise and fall. Wherever there is lack of direction, receive discernment. Receive discernment. Receive discernment. Receive discernment. You are going to say this with your mouth. Say, today, I move away from the same financial level. Say, I walk into a higher financial level. I walk into a higher financial level. I walk into a higher financial level. If you believe it, say it louder. Amen. As your amen will resound, I pray every near success syndrome is broken from your life. Every near success syndrome is broken from your life. 
lack of spiritual fire is broken from your life evil patterns and cycles are broken from your life labor without favor is broken from your life labor without favor is broken from your life fruitlessness is destroyed from your life household wickedness is destroyed household wickedness is destroyed household wickedness is destroyed let your amen turn down promise without fulfillment is broken from your life promise without fulfillment is broken from your life losses and setbacks are broken spiritual laziness is broken any form of covering is broken stubbornness to the holy spirit is broken sudden disasters are broken destiny mistakes are broken leaking pockets are broken leaking pockets are broken stronghold of impossibilities are broken laughter stoppers are broken laughter stoppers are broken celebration hijackers are broken celebration hijackers are broken disgrace and shame is broken from now till the next anniversary hear me well because i need your amen to rise there shall be no obituary around you let me say it again you will not hear the sound of any obituary you will not bury and you will not be buried you will not bury and you will not be buried let your amen resound any power of last minute failure is broken from your life consistent bad news is destroyed from your life repeated battles will no longer arise repeated battles will no longer arise repeated battles will no longer arise hear me as i hear the lord any stubborn destiny pursuer i decree over your life may they turn around and begin to pursue themselves may they turn around and begin to pursue themselves may they turn around and begin to pursue themselves let your amen turn down while your two hands are lifted in this land you will not be stranded in this land you will be blessed in this land you shall be said this one was remembered by the lord three months from today may you love that laugh you have been waiting for the spirit of god said when you come for this anniversary release a mantle of laughter in that area where you have been waiting to laugh receive your mantle of laughter receive your mantle of laughter receive your mantle of laughter your womb will carry your children your womb will carry your children three months after today from now to the next three months let it become your testimony you are moving into a bigger job i decree immigration challenges will become a miracle immigration challenges will become a miracle receive it right now receive it right now receive it right now receive it right now in the name of jesus any altar that has vowed that you will not rise as your amen will thunder let fire answer them i said let fire answer them let fire answer them let fire answer them in the name of jesus any man or woman in ministry i pray for you at this point in time may the lord move your ministry to the next level let there be an uncommon unction let there be an uncommon deposits of the spirit and let there be a platform for expression receive it right now receive it right now receive it right now receive it right now in the name of jesus i decree it is done so shall it be in jesus name we have prayed
Celebrate the Lord if you know that your word just came to you right now.